Hey, yo, episode 250 what? We're not in 60 yet? <laughs> no, 259. We, oh. made a, we made a podcast. Back in the building. Zinsequente Novi. Oh, yeah, so you're just going to run out of letters in a little bit. Numbers. Letters. What's, 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 what's the rest of that shirt say? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Did it say best grandpa? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's facts. Um, <laughs> we made a podcast. We're back with another episode. You know, we started five years ago This in the summer. You know, we were doing um, Confederations Cup around this time, I think, uh, five years ago. The Realist talking about Draxler. But yeah, uh, today we're going to be doing a little something different. Um, Caesar and I, hopefully we can do this throughout uh, the summer before the season starts, um, before like there's any crazy transfers. We're going to be playing general manager today. Um, Caesar is going to be general manager of? FC Barcelona. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to be general manager of Paris State. Oh, yeah, Birmingham, <laughs> Birmingham, uh, Paris Saint Germain, Dupree, Jackson, Jones. So, so deaf. Yes. <laughs> Don't make me remember that concert we happened to see that time. <laughs> One of the greatest accidental moments in our lives. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, you know, Zoom give us a time limit now, so we can't spend forever just chopping it up. Um, although, if anybody's listening to this, I do want to know if there's any other soccer podcast people that play soccer um actively uh caesar and i've been playing soccer uh pickup games but yeah, organi- no, no, organized no, form, no former pros count either don't don't you know yeah count. no of course not but um i mean caesar been playing soccer for a long time i think you were playing in that indoor league before you went to hawaii right or no yeah and i was also playing um i was playing indoor league in hawaii i played indoor before but the one in Gar- I, the one in Garden Grove. Yeah, and I was also playing in Irvine before with a different group, and that's when you came in. I came to that like twice. Twice, and then then I found a new group and stuff like that. Yeah, so we've been playing with this new group. Caesar was going there for a while before I started going, uh, but we've been playing for at least like four or five years with those people. Um, and I and just my friend that me- introduced me to them barely even comes. You know, he's like once a year there. <laughs> that one Asian dude, right? Yeah, he invited. He he told me about them. Yeah, um, but yeah, I want to know if any other soccer podcast people actually play soccer. Mm, that'd be cool. I'm curious. But anyway, forget about all that. Uh, we're going to start with general manager Caesar today, or should we start with me? I want to hear yours first. I hear okay, yours. Caesar's probably like going to ramble. I'm going to ramble. Caesar probably uh, didn't start doing his yet. I already did mine. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> my hands up. Look at my hands. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's start with me. Um, I've been hired as general manager of uh, PSG. And, you know, I'm not just going to this, oh, here's the deals you need to make. I'm talking about the club, you know. I'm talking to your boy Nasser right here. He speaks great English. Um, He does. You know, he's from Qatar, so I'm not, like, scared of him for real. You know what I mean? Like, Qatar don't really got that sauce like that. If it was Saudi Arabia, it'd be a little bit different. They'd be cutting people up. But but, um, here's what I got. Off top. PSG's normal issue is getting rid of players. PSG overpays, so players want to fulfill their contracts there. You know, sadly, PSG has a number of players who I deem undesirable for other teams. I got five off top. Icardi, Juan Bernat, Colin Dagba, Kurzawa, and Tilo Kerr. Now, is there a team out there for them? For sure. But they're basically undesirable. Like, nobody's like, oh, we're trying to get that guy. Um, Bernat, injury problems. Colin Dagba is really bad. Kurzawa's even worse. Uh, Tilo Kerr is one of, is like, I never thought I'd see a more mistake-prone player than Kempembe, but he is. Low game IQ. Yeah, like the worst. He's like the previous Neymar. 
you like I relax. <laughs> I I I never thought I'd see a more mistake prone player than Kempembe, but Tilo Kara is the worst. He's literally and, the same dude he was like four years ago. Man, this is crazy. <laughs> and 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 Icardi is just like he he hasn't done much at PSG. Um, I, I, I he's been exposed at in France. Um, so that's that's that issue. But the big the big issue is Neymar. Now. Um, we're hearing the recent news that they want to send Neymar out alone or whatever. Um, that's just not going to happen. Neymar is going to, this is what I wrote. Neymar is going to stay at PSG and he would rather sit on the bench than leave. He's got a huge contract. PSG is like, they're not like, they're not going to bench him before the world cup. You know, it's in PSG's interest for Neymar to be prepared for the world cup. But after that, including next season, um, I think Neymar wants to see out his contract because you don't know what's going to happen after that. And, you know, he's going to like, he's, he's going to do a rabio. Like he's going to sit on the bench unless until he has to go, you know, um, immediately when I think we'll make PSG better, like immediately, like right now, and this might be unpopular, you got to get rid of Kimpembe. I think Kimpembe is like, he's not the worst player in the world, but PSG's got to have a better situation than Marquinhos and Kimpembe. Um, I was almost going to say you got to get rid of Marquinhos, like not because he's bad, just because I'm like, you've been there for so long and it just hasn't worked. Like sometimes you just got to like get somebody out of there. That's kind of how I feel, but I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. You're so expendable with players. Oh I'm not saying it for real, but I need to have a talk with him though. Like a real one. <laughs> like, Is this fault? <laughs> no, no. I need to have a talk with Marquinhos. I'm be like, dude, what's, are you cursed? Like what's going on here? <laughs> oh, I would but, hate to play on this guy. <laughs> no, you, you, it, look, the only look, person that works hard on your damn team is Marquinhos. Hey, hey, you're working hard, but nothing's happening. So let's what's going on here? Are Talk. you working hard or do you just look like you're working hard? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think Kimpembe's gotta go. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, he's he's not like that good. Um, he hasn't improved and I just feel like he doesn't really do much for your team. I wouldn't be mad at seeing Sergio Ramos starting next season. I feel like Sergio Ramos probably sat this season for the most part and was like, ah, you know, like, I'm not really trying to do much. But if they got Kimpembe out of there, he might see like, oh, I can start, you know, and he might turn up. And when I saw him play last season, honestly, he was better than Marquinhos and Kimpembe on the ball. Um, Defending wise, like, whatever like Marquinhos is like faster and stronger and like you know more physical he's gonna and and probably not smarter but like you know he's gonna do his thing defensively but I wouldn't be mad at having a situation where you're starting Marquinhos and Sergio Ramos and I don't know who like I don't know center backs on the market but um Danilo X Machina X Machina is not the worst uh center back and he Mm -hmm. played there plenty last season and he did well um, this is also, this is also what I wrote. You're going to have Mbappe, Messi, Neymar there next season, uh, this season coming up. So I'm sorry, this season is a wash. Like you, 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 you'll probably win the league maybe, but you're not going to win champions league. It's going to be a, it's, it's going to be a sad situation once again, but that's not going to matter as much because we have a world cup during the season. Mm. The, the like what could end up being great for PSG is if you have a World Cup final where it's either w- one of the winners or like if you have Brazil versus Argentina, France versus Argentina, Argentina versus Brazil, France versus Brazil, like w- one of those three in the final and one of them wins, that's great for PSG. You know, either Messi or Neymar or Mbappe is going to win the World Cup and they played against their teammate and then they got to go back to PSG. That's plenty media. That's great. You know, that's great for your season. Um, you know, it's been a while since the South American team won a world cup. So it might just end up being France versus Poland in the final. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Actually. 
That kind of lets us know where you're at now. <laughs> but um, become Polo. Oh, and, and and not just Neymar. You have Marquinhos as well. So that would be great for PSG. And like, although you know they're terrible in the world in the Champions League, they do have players that have a good chance of winning the World Cup um, this season coming up. That's going to be great for them. Although they're not going to win Champions League, and who knows if they'll win the league. Um, because it's just not going to work with Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe. Now, if one of them gets hurt or something like that after November or like after the final, that'll probably be better. If unless it's Mbappe, um, that'll be better for them. Um, although I, I, yeah, whatever. If one of them gets hurt, they'll be better. But except for Mbappe, a um, couple more things. So we're, we're so thinking about after this season because sadly the season's a wash with them three. Messi's going to leave next season, and probably. Um, Neymar's gonna leave 2025. Um, I think that they're gonna, I think it's gonna be a situation where Mbappe has one season without Neymar and Messi now. Hmm. Um, before he goes to Real Madrid, but it might be too late at that point. Um, you know, it's hard to know, like, who's the next young dude coming up. Mbappe, at his age, is, like, the best player in the world. You have, like, Vinicius Jr. after that. And then, like, it's hard to say, like, who's going to be the next dude like that. Um, you know, honestly, if I, I feel like if Rodrigo was on a different team, he might be, like, he could potentially be on Vinicius Jr. level. Um, if he was, if he had, like, come up on another team or like went to another team next season or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like once Mbappe leaves. Imagine if, if Rodrigo was on Barcelona, how wild it'd be. Exactly. It'd be um, if Mbappe leaves, who knows who's going to be the next big star. I think 2025 or so, Qatar is going to be like, we're out now. <laughs> who wants to buy this team? <laughs> Like, because I just can't see, like, you know, obviously there's somebody that's 16 right now that's really good, but, like, I don't know who, you know? Yeah. Like, and it seems like Mbappe is going to, is like a once in a generation type player. Like, I don't think you're going to have very many players like that at the same time, you know? Um, what, what do you do? Like, I feel like, in a couple of years, Cutter's going to be gone. They might just say like, well, damn, you know, we don't got anybody to market like that. You can barely market Mbappe. You know? I feel like Mbappe is not very marketable. You done? You know? I mean, I, I mean, relax, relax. Like, do you think, I know, but do you think I sound crazy? Or do you like, I, I don't need your necessary comments on the whole thing, but like, do you I, I don't think, I don't know. I think it's a little, it's very risky for your career as a general manager to be lofting up Mbappe like that. I think that like, you know, of course, in time he's hard to market. I think it's, I think he is a one generation. I think you have to just, I think it's better to lock him down. And he's already course, locked down. Yeah. I'm saying, well, for the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, and like focus on that and just kind of like, of course, offload players like Neymar, which are hard to do. You have like that's what you have to do because he's the kind of player where it's about building around him, building marketability around him, and players that compliment him for sure. He's, he's got three more years on that contract, Neymar. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the biggest problem with Neymar is like not even the years on that contract is the wages. Like no one wants to pay five hundred k. Like he's like one of the highest paid weekly players too. Forty million a year. Who's like? Well, and why would he insane. leave? Why would he leave? His contract. He's gonna be thirty three. Like. That's might they're well they're hoping for a loan because maybe PSG could pull off like a 60 40 split and be like, you know, and but who wants to pay 15 million dollars or, or you know, to, uh, unless it's an EPL team, you know, like it has to be a, a big giant team, and there's only like three that can really take on a part of that, and all of them have wingers right now. So, and, and, and I just think about like Neymar, and I, I don't really like to diss Neymar like that, but even maybe if I'm him, it's like, why you want to go somewhere where you got to like have so much pressure? You know, like you, you hit 30, you got a 40 million a year contract, just stay there. They're not going to, they're not going to 
Well, they're not going to they're not going to bench you before the World Cup. I'm sorry. It was um you, the the owner said that uh Neymar situations up in the air right now for the project. He did. He, he made some that, comments. Yeah, he said that he's not part of the project or whatever. Well, he, he didn't say that exactly, but when they asked him, he didn't say like, "Oh, we love Neymar." He, yeah, didn't, he say, didn't say he didn't say just like Mbappe Neymar is like, you know, integral part of our project. He just said that, you know, like <laughs> he did. And 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 like that's okay, but <laughs> PSG would be idiots cuz I don't I can't see Neymar getting loaned before this season. Like no, for, no, I don't think so. They would be crazy to bench Two him. Months left. They would be crazy to bench him with the World Cup coming up. You got to let him play because if he brings a World Cup, like if, if Brazil wins a World Cup, that looks great for PSG. Yeah, you know? especially like uh, like number one ranked right now in FIFA and like. You know, so it's 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 weird to have this off season, a World Cup off season, and no transfers, no World Cup during that transfer window. It's so weird to it's me. It's weird. Like, this is the World Cup's a good place for players to market themselves better to move to new teams. You know, young talent. You know, so it's 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 very it's weird. weird, but it's but it's fun. It is, and I'm very curious to see how the season's gonna go um, when the World Cup does start in November. That's gonna be also very strange that. Maybe all these transfers. Maybe Neymar's going to move during the winter break, which is very wild. Yeah, that'd be he crazy. might want to go somewhere hot and be so cold where he is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's PSG. Uh, we're done with PSG. Let's hear about Barcelona from uh, the best grandpa in the world, general manager Caesar. Hello, I, uh, my name is Caesar. I am now the uh, general manager and uh, player relations of FC Barcelona. Um, I've taken on this task and unlike my counterpart and longtime friend and brother who has a, a spoiled riches to work with of, of, of plethora of talent that has gone to waste on this team. I have a lot of, I have a lot of um, um, what, like another man's trash is another man's treasure on a team. That's what I have. I have a lot of pieces. I have people, I have players that were has beens, could be's, would be's and should be's. Now, on this team, we finished second La Liga last year and came home with the same amount of trophies as Pochettino before he played it, before he managed the PSG and got that Gimme Liga trophy. Um, that fake one that's made out of plastic that looks real ugly. Whoa. Um, that's a very ugly trophy. Um, <laughs> the Hot Wheel. Um, I'm looking at my roster, and there's a lot of changes that are going to be made top to bottom. Everyone talks about a project. That's not what we're doing here. We're shifting the culture at my club. The culture needs a change. We have players that were doing things in 2010. My friend, they didn't even have 1440p back then. We're going to switch it up here. Um, now, I want to emphasize that I'm going to keep young talent. I like the young talent on this team. Players like Gavi. Players like Araujo. Um, player who is a Brazilian. Um, players like Trincaon, you know, I like him a lot um, because I can say his name like that. Um, Ansu Fati? Ansu Fati is not going to stay with this club. I'm very sorry, dude. Um, Ansu Fati has a, a world of talent that everyone else sees and everyone else values. And I like that. So we want to give him the maximum opportunities to play. This is a win now team, not win tomorrow. The first thing we're doing in a transfer window we are acquiring the transfer of Raheem Sterling. I think Raheem Sterling is a phenomenal piece to this team. He has good ball control, speed, vision, and he can do it all and play on both sides of that winger position. We need that. We don't need single single uh, north-south players. He's also east-west. Um, I do believe in the Memphis depay Bumayang combo. I don't think that's something that needs to be moved right now. Um, I think that that he he can do good in the right situation. And, you know, if Loa Dossi comes, he comes. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I think we got it cracking no matter what. The whole level thing is very weird. Do you want him? No. Um, <laughs> so uh, at midfield, this is where I am going to tell a lot of people, get the hell out of here. You're going to be playing in Turkey. Busquets, Sergio Roberto, Pjanic, uh, the Collado dude. Uh, Pablo Torre, I don't know who the hell that is. He's on the team now. Um, <laughs> Pui, uh, big pig man, he's out of here. Pig man's oh. gone. Or, 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 P Puig, pig oh. man. Pig man's gone. Everybody's gone. 
especially the first one there was Busquets. Thank you for your service. Dap them up. Nice firm handshakes. Time to go play in MLS. Go play with your buddies in MLS now. Um, Kiesi's coming to the team. That's a good signing from Milan. Um, I do think that they do need another backup, like enforcer CDM. I want to see a good traditional 4 3 3 in, in Barcelona, and you need another defensive stopper. So we're going to be calling the services and maybe Condobia, someone that can inter swap with Kiesi on that middle in the middle play. I think Gavi and Pedri are very good. Um, I think Gavi's a lot better than Pedri personally. Um, Pedri just a, a, a workhorse, and just like Real Madrid has the Valverde, Pedri's kind of similar for for Barcelona. Spec he has, he just doesn't nearly have the speed, I think. Um, but he's just a very traditional center mid that can runs around all day. To it's kind of embarrassing. Um, but I think another player who can who has good um, attention to like commanding in midfield would be good for our team. I'm thinking of a, a good player, a really good player, and I'll get back to you on that one. But the the fullback, I really want. Two fullbacks. They need fullbacks on this team desperately. Can I Angelino guess one? Angelino from Red guess, Bull, Leipzig. Can I guess one? Yeah. Serge Aurier. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, you said, you said no. Angelino? I was actually thinking about uh, DeAndre Eblen. Uh, <laughs> you said Angelino? Angelino oh from guy. Red Bull. Um, we need a left bo- left back like him. He has grit. He kind of has that, that gangster moxie that they need on his team. Um, any and, and I think that'd be a lot better uh, considering that they were running Jerry Alba, it's been great, but it's time to go. Um, Angelina, I think would be a great addition team. Also, at right back, this is a controversial right back I want to get. I don't think he's the best. I don't think I don't even like watching him play. Actually, I hate him and his hair, but I think for this team, he would do good. Would be Trent Alexander Arnold, would be good on this team. This is why. Now, listen to no, me. No, I agree. I like that. Listen to me. Yeah. He has, he's not the best defender. And he had, but he has a lot of that grit that Barcelona has to have. He has a lot of attitude problems. That's great. Um, and he likes to, he does a lot of good service. He does some good service up top. And that's huge because all the fullbacks that Real Madrid and Barcelona have been killing the world with have all had great service. Um, and they've been missing that. I know they used to play um, uh, Sergio Roberto right back, but he's older and too slow now. Um, so that's not going to happen. And Sergio Des, this just not, it's not, that man needs to, yeah, he should be playing with Cornet at Burnley right now. Um, but um, yeah, so we're, we're going to be looking at getting those two as primary options for the front. I think they'd be great on the team. That's a good back line. I think that that'd make me uncomfortable going against fullbacks like this. And then they have good options with young guys. I like to, I like to use young guys as the replacement players. I don't like to really get a star behind a star. I think it's overdoing like PSG does. And I'm not going to be like my counterpart. Um, I think um TT needs to go because for his, for his happiness, um, I love him. I think he should move on. Um, Eric Garcia, please, anybody can take him, please. I, I, I beg of you to take Eric Garcia off my team. So to think to start the uh, a center back, I like Araujo. I like him because he has speed. He is Uruguayan. He has, uh, that's all. That's all I need. And I think that another good addition would be who Bam wants to get rid of. We'll take Marquinhos. We'll take Marquinhos over here. Oh. No, 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 no. We'll take Marquinhos. He's on the market now. He's on the market. He's You're, on the market. Yeah, he's I, on the market. I heard rumors from when I was hanging out with Bam that, you know, he wants to let you go, dog. You don't value you like I do. Come on to Barcelona. Better weather. Good vibes. <laughs> I th- No, this is not true. <laughs> I'm dead. No, I'm I'm actually just kidding. Who I think would be a really good addition for this team would be looking at like Delict over at Juventus or Skinrar at Inter Milan. I like him a lot. I think like a solid kind of like not not bad with too bad with his feet. Solid brick line center back is what you need who can play some balls up to the front. And then you have Aru who has all that speed energy on the other side. That's a good compliment. You don't need two fast guys like Real Madrid is going to have. But if you have one solid guy and one guy who can cover a lot of traction, I think that's going to be really good for your team, especially for like what's going, especially when players like Trent Alexander who are very desperate to go forward, you have the center backs who are going to be able to recover off that. I don't ever talk about um, 
uh, a goalie. So we're not even going to do goalie stuff. Goalies, whatever, dude. I mean, you have 15. You can just give me one. Um, <laughs> you have 44 over there in your team. But, yeah, I think Raheem Sterling would be good. Angelino, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, um, um, unfortunately, not Marquinhos. But, like, the Lakers, like Skinner from, from Inter Milan would be good. Um, and if I, the only guy I really thought striker-wise, honestly, that I'd want that would only take the position of a Boyan or Depay would be Lothado Martinez. That's the only guy who I'm like, I don't want to hear you guys bring me a striker on scouting report unless it's him and unless he's down. Like, I, I don't want to do this. I don't even want to play a game where my players think they're going to dip unless that's happening to be like, hey, dog, <laughs> look, I, this is, this is, you got to do this. This guy is going to be here for 10 years. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not getting rid of him. Like, so we got to do this. So here's the question. How are you going to fund some of these acquisitions? Because it, I, I'm hearing that, uh, what's his name? Frankie De Jong is going to go. So yes. you're going to try to transfer. Uh, I don't want him to go, but yeah. But you're, you're going to try to uh, send out. I don't want him to go. <laughs> well, he's going to go. He's out of there. And he's um, he's here right now. I don't want him to go. <laughs> well, he's you, well, very, you need to, very good. <laughs> you, uh, well, what about, um? so you want to get rid of uh, Ansu Fati? Busquets. Uh, Busquets, I do want to get rid of Busquets. Busquets is going to be like nine million. Okay, I do want to get Ansu Fati, but Ansu Fati has a lot of value. People really but value Ansu the Fati. Past two I, I know. Me and you are different. I'm okay. not going to go spend money on Ansu Fati. I'll, if I'm if he want if I'm if I'm controlling the Wolves and they want to loan him, hey, let's go. Like that's fine. Yeah. But I'm not going to – but other teams really value him highly. They see him as, like, the same level as Vinicius, which is brazy to me. It, it, okay, Cesar, is this the – is this teams or media, though? Because I, I feel mean, like are, it's – Are teams that intelligent? I don't even know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, they're all dumb. Yeah. So, no, I what I do like is that uh, – what I like more than Atsu Fati is that guy that played on Wolves, the Barcelona loan, the Portuguese dude, Trincao. He's a baller. I liked him a lot. I think keeping him this season would be good. That's a good guy to come off the bench. They had that um, Moroccan kid, Easy or something like that. Uh, but he was all right. I was like, Easy money, Easy money on the team. Get Easy on here, uh, Big Easy on the team. Uh, I I've watched way too much Barcelona. I just want to let you know that I'm so mad. I know these names and these players. I know exactly how they look like, how they play. I've watched them way too much this year. I heard but, you. Want, um, I heard you want to bring in Santi Mina. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to bring him into the court. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I want to bring him in and do a sting operation. He's going to get <laughs> arrested. No, but I just think oh, that hey, Barcelona hey. has like a lot of those like has been players and, and a lot of potential talent. That's, that's, that's a bad mix. You need to have solid oh, PK, veterans PK. and young talent, not has been talent and young, vet, young players. What about PK? You getting him out of there? Absolutely. He's not with Shakira anymore. What are we doing here? Is this, uh, it's oh, over, dog. Okay, now here's another question, too. Because they're going back and forth about Dembele. Would you want to keep him or would you try to... Because he's 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 free. He's, it's on a free transfer now. Would you try to keep him? I want to I want to keep him, to be honest. I would want to re-sign Dembele because I'm not an idiot manager. I would see it better to be a team wanting to pay and transfer him over than to me let him walk. For free. Um, for free. I mean, like, I just doesn't – I don't see how that benefits us because if he stays, it, we don't, we're don't. we not paying a transfer fee to him. We're just getting new contract of wages. I think getting around to fight, having him on the roster, I don't think that's bad. Now, do I think he fits the scheme of a, a player I want? Not really. Um, but I think he could complement Raheem Sterling well because I don't like to count on them Bailey to do everything, but if he's there and he gets a crack in, that's great. And I think I'd rather, I'd rather run that ball – to where Raheem Sterling is and go from there on the field. And you have players like Depay, you have players, I mean, uh, you have players like Memphis Depay and, and Abumia who have good hold up plate too. And just having Sterling and the Bailey as options, I think is great for the team too. So I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to give him. Ansu Fati, like, I don't want to be mean. Like, I do I think he's healthy? He could do something? Absolutely. He could do something. I'm just like, I don't know if I want to, I, you know what it is, man. You've watched football for years. I'm sorry, dog. I don't want to be, I'm not like the club of like pity. Like when I see a lot of consistent injuries, I know what the game is like, dog. It's your time is running out. Look at, look at hazard, like hazard. It's it just, it, it, it becomes a shell of what he was. And we sung crazy praises about him. Me and Bam 
together watch one of the craziest goals ever when he scored. So it, it just injuries can really affect your whole career. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, honestly, I like everything. That you but have. you made a good point. Barcelona's in this weird financial constraint, but I would look that Barcelona hasn't been doing a lot of offloading. I would be looking to do offloading. I think that would help with some of the funding of these players. And, you know, De Jong is, you know, talking about they're talking about 60 million euros and uh, plus 15 or whatever. And they're talking and then getting rid of Fati. I think that would leave us some room to play around with players like Sterling. Who I looked at, they were like offering like 44 for him. Like, that's hell yeah. Let's go. Okay. But Caesar, let's look at this too. You got Ferran Torres, Abumiang, Depay, Sterling, Dembele. <laughs> uh, okay. uh that's a lot of attacking players also this fifa is going to be going five subs next year okay okay i don't i don't know if that's a lot i think that's okay i, I think right now they have a crazy amount but i, I think like i don't i don't count some of the randoms they have and braithwaite's braithwaite's out of here he's playing in japan or something like that. No, i'm not keeping braithwaite bam you can have him um <laughs> no nah, like i think that i think that you need to have a good consistent rotation of strikers i would like to see the pay as much on the field as possible and a boomerang that i know that's hard but i think that the pay could run like some kind of like cam slash yeah, forward he's a position line. he's so he's so versatile on a field i don't really i don't really care where he is i just want him out there and i think that players like sterling have been used to man city system where they just play kind of all over the front and midfield that he, they can, they'll, they'll find room to make it happen in a four, three, three. Um, yeah. I think the pay will be happy to speak English too. I think, and I, I, th- I think the pay, honestly, like, I think he really likes living there. He, you know, he likes being uh, vibing out there. He's yeah. So I don't, I don't think he, he, he wants to go for real. So if he wants to go, I mean, a big, big love. You can go big dog. I just love that. He would be going to Neymar's parties. Yeah. He, I mean, I just like that that when he did the English, he like when he did the interview, he was like all suited up, very professional, and was dropping English. That shit is very cool to me. <laughs> I, I like that straight English. <laughs> yeah, Dutch players are speaking English. Yeah, um, that's cool though. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel you. Like, I think that um, we would do better than whoever they got there. I think that if you move some of, the, if you watch Barcelona like we did last year, you know what the clear issues were. They, they had they they looked like they were they were a little lost they looked like they were tired they looked like they just didn't have enough talent and skill to get things done and um and, and of course when Abumia came it changed everything that was an immense amount of skill and diversity in your team has come to your roster but the midfield was the same the the back line was absolute that back line's been needed to change for a long time. And even if you got anybody, I can't believe they like, like, I know they picked up Christensen from Chelsea. Um, I, I think he's okay. Like, that's Mid. fine. I think all that is better than having PK out there, um, having a depressed MT team <laughs> sitting there. Like, long, I just, long, you got to just change that locker and that back line. You got to have a new back line that can just vibe together, you know? And I, honestly. I remember watching Longley earlier, like before. He was such a different player. Yeah, like he was good. I don't know what happened. Like I just, I think, I think you honestly like it. Locker room culture is very real. Yeah, I think happiness is very real, and 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 I think that there's like this that back line is very goofy and weird, and I don't think PK's necessarily a real leader. I don't think he's like a real camaraderie guy. I don't see him as like an instant positive impact locker room guy and i think if all these players were like if you substituted ramos with pk i think it'd be a different environment back there caesar they're gonna be clowning him so much now that shakira left him they're gonna be clowning him every day in the locker and, room and ramos even as he gets older he still has that respect that you know he goes hard and he, he has some swag still with the ball oh PK yeah. doesn't have any of that so no. as he as he's getting like destroyed it players are like yeah, but like I'm still not getting my minutes, and this guy's out here. He got served up in 2011. Like, what are we doing right now? So I, I think it's tough. I think it's hard. And also, a, a thing to notice about Barcelona, they have no other than Aujo, who like they obviously got. Where's the young? There's no young Spanish like uh player developed. There's nothing back there. Like, there's all these guys are other teams. Villarreal has Paulo Torres. Like, where's the guy for Barcelona? We don't have a guy. Like they got Eric Garcia. I'm like, he. Oh god! Like, oh god! Don't even say that name. They should. They should get like a Paulo Torres. Uh, um. Uh, they should have got 
uh, what's his name? Paduras from um, uh, uh, Villarreal. That's a good player to have Caesar, back there. Caesar, they gave all their money to Messi, dude. They gave Messi all their money. Yeah. And then it's and a then, tough club to really rebuild, honestly. And and then they got nothing for it. Now he's on PSG, chilling. But um, but no, honestly, I think that we've shown that we're both better than um than uh whoever's at Barcelona and PSG. You know I'm real because I would walk right up. Marquinhos be sitting there thinking he's all cool and chill, like oh yeah, I'm just chilling. And I'll be like, Marquinhos, I need to see you in my office, dude. This guy is just I'm unbelievable. <laughs> I just be like, look, are, are you good or what? He'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, well, how, then what's the what, how come what we're, are we doing here? Yeah, how come we're not winning though? How come when I look at Ramos and you, I'm not really seeing nothing crazy different? What's going on here? I'm just be like, you're just faster. I'm just be like, how good are you? Like, are you good enough to lift us to this level or what? You were in that bend on your arm. What's going on here? Yeah. Can you are you good enough to tell Neymar something? Can you tell Kimbipa he sucks? Yeah. Are you scared of anybody? Because you seem scared. Is you scared? <laughs> but yeah, honestly, like, they, I mean, we would make any team better instantly, even a bad team. Um, I don't know if there's been any transfers. I haven't really looked. But um, I do think uh, Gareth Bale needs to just go ahead and go to Newcastle. Oh, um, uh, Gar- yeah. Gareth Bale needs to, needs to roll out of here. Uh, there was the, I know I do want to, I, I've been seeing a lot of buzz about Marseille. I hope they get somebody soon. Uh, they're talking about to get the baby Cliver. Um, they're talking, oh, I hope they get Brian Gill off of, uh, Tottenham. Um, they did uh, to Marseille. That'd be dope. Minamino did go to Monaco, which was good, which is awesome. I love that. That's a great move. Great move there. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Anyway, um, let's let's get off before um, Zoom uh, deletes us right now. Uh, we made a podcast, episode 259. Episode title is going to be Generally Managing Barcelona and PSG. <laughs> and hopefully next week we can do um, – I feel like Real Madrid is, like, perfectly fine. We don't need to really do them. Let's do a different – let's do a different one. Uh, let's do um, – let's, let's do, like, a oh, English You know one. what, Caesar? Man U. Uh-huh. You need it. Um, Juve, oh, you Juve, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's do. Let's actually, do you Juve. do Juve because you watch. Did you watch Serie A this season or not really? Not really. But I'll do Juve. I'll do Juve. But uh, okay, no, no. I was just. No, you I was you just stopped oh, watching it way earlier than me. I'll watch Juve. No, no. But only I know I, about Piemonte Calcio. I'll watch them. <laughs> okay, but I just only said that because I thought you were watching them this season. But I can't. No, remember. I want to do it. I want to do it. Okay, okay. I'll do Man U because I did watch a lot of Man U. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and you do Juve because they both need it bad. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a we just finished our first ever football football manager twenty twenty two. Exactly, uh, we made a podcast. Holler. <laughs>